somebody with me. So when the mind is not developed to the point where it can interact with this divine intelligence, then it becomes a problem. But God is saying, you and I, we have what? The mind of Christ. We have the potential to walk on this earth with the same mind of Christ. The mind that knew what was in all men. <laughs> Hallelujah. The mind that could not be faced by any challenge. The mind that could proclaim victory even before seeing it. Hallelujah. Look at verse 7 of that 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Wisdom is measured not in terms of intellectual prowess or intellectual ability, but in development of character. Praise God. I've seen a lot of lecturers in business studies who have not started any business. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Praise God. I've seen a lecturer in religious studies who beats his wife every day until the woman ran out. <laughs> Praise God. So, wisdom is never measured in terms of your intelligence. It is measured in terms of what it has done in you that is manifest as your conduct. Did, did, I, did you get what I said? Is it clear? Praise God. The Bible says in verse 7 that the wisdom of God which we speak of in a mystery is a hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. It's a gift that is now available in God, through God, because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's a gift that is available for you. The Bible says in verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. He who made it possible for that hidden wisdom to now be available to you. The wisdom that is able to now make your mind as fertile, as productive, as potent as the mind of Christ. It's available. Praise God. Scientists have found out that the best genius, the best of men hardly make use of 10% of their brain. Because it's such a, a supercomputer. But as we begin to engage with the word of God, it's able to quicken areas of our brain that normal intellectual pursuit can never quicken. It's able to enable you to engage with certain senses that are spiritual, not physical. <laughs> Is somebody with me? Yes. Hallelujah. The Bible says in verse 9, But as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear had. Now, if you look at the context, it's still the context is the context of this hidden wisdom. Praise God. The context of what we are reading. It says, as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear had, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. For God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is not through the eyes or intellectual wisdom what we we 
Not only that, it is revealed from within. It is revealed by the Spirit. And I tell you, it is your mind that becomes the steering wheel of your life. Which is why it is so important what we feed our mind. One of the three, there are three major functions of the mind. One is learning. What did I say? Learning. God has so created us in a way that our mind is built to learn. That is why you have the five gates, the eye gate, the ear gate, the nose gate, the taste, the touch. All these senses are for what? For learning. Learning, storage, storage for what purpose? For future use. And so if I've ever touched something hot before, once I see that thing, there is, it's already stored. That, that is what, don't touch it again. So we will never stop learning. When you stop learning for any reason, your brain begins to disintegrate. Ecclesiastes tells us, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 tells us, Hmm? It says, when the house is no more in use, it will begin to fall through. Is that not true? Even in the natural. Leave a house unused, and you think you are preserving it, but it begins to fall apart. The same way with our brain. Praise God. Nobody achieves anything because they have a brain. Those who achieve things achieve it because they use their brain. The more we use it, the more we stare it, the more it will produce. Somebody likened the brain to the pool at Bethesda. <laughs> Praise God. The more you stare it, the more miracles you see. And I believe God that in this month, God will be stirring us up, stirring our mind, stirring our heart, stirring our potentials in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. The first principal function of the mind is learning, acquiring information, storing information for future use. But there is something that is amazing about the Bible. Because with the Bible, learning is not just reading. <laughs> the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a wise man eh, that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so sometimes, you know, we just think it's enough to read. It's not enough to read. If we are going to engage with the wisdom of God, if you are going to acquire wisdom through God, it takes something more than reading. Hallelujah. It takes learning. What does learning cons consist of? Learning consists of meditation. Meditation is what helps you to not only understand what you have read, but also to appropriate it for use in life, to believe its truth as truth, thinking upon it, applying it in a personal, in a personal capacity. Hallelujah. Meditation. If we just read the Bible only, without learning from it, you know, the way the Bible is written and the way the Bible is designed is such that the Bible gives numerous examples and illustrations to illustrate every principle. 